Welcome to part two of trying to tame the monoprice mini delta. If you miss part one, it's just a video tutorial on how to change the nozzle on the mini delta and how to disassemble the hot end for repair. So if you want to know how that's done, please check it out in the link below. Otherwise, stick around here to see the results. In this video, I intend to show you firstly the results and then a short journey I took trying to improve the output, then a conclusion on whether I think it's worth changing the nozzle for the 0.2 millimeters. And finally, I'll show you the key settings I believe work best for this printer and potentially for other printers too. This video has chapters, so please skip to the bits you want to see. Let's get started. Now the first print I did was one I've done before on a 0.4mm nozzle, so I could directly compare it with previous results. It's not too tricky for the printer to print. It's a turret from Factorio which is a, a video game I play. As a side note, Factorio is an amazing game. If you haven't tried it you absolutely must. Now this was printed in red PLA because that's what I had loaded in the printer but I painted it grey a bit just so we could compare it. Now this one is the original one that I've done on the 0.4. It's hard initially to see any massive difference but if I show them side by side using the magic of video editing you can see there is more detail in certain areas of the print. Although it has to be said that the one on the right does have slightly more stringing perhaps, so it's harder to tell. But on the rear part where the, I don't know what it's called, where the bullets go in, you can see better there. And then you've got the little ridges around the edge and they're better defined. And a few other places as well, like the very end of the, of the turret that you can't see. Honestly, if I'd done a better job at cleaning up the red, the red one before painting it, it would have probably really looked a lot better than the black one. And so I did actually print out one in black once I'd loaded the black filament in. And you can see, I mean, it still needs a clean up. I didn't take the time to do that, but you can, you can see that it already looks a lot better. Now this does feel a bit like a post-holiday snapshot slideshow at this point, so I'll try and cut it down a bit but I wanted to show you this one which was printed out on a 0.4 nozzle this was printed out on an Ender 3 actually not the Mini Delta so we've actually got a bit more you know the, the Ender 3 is thought to be better quality but this doesn't I, I mean it, it, it actually looks okay to the naked eye but the the um the level of detail is it's it's very small it's a small piece so let's have a look at what the Delta managed to do with the 0.2 now I think you'd struggle not to agree that that actually does look, a, I mean it's it's levels of magnitude better, but I am cheating a little because it was printed out maybe, I don't know, 10-15% larger than the previous one you saw just, just due to me messing up when I was scaling the model. So I've printed out a slightly smaller one which came out even smaller than the one you just saw, so I'll put them side by side, that'll help. And here's the smaller printed one. You can see there's a, there's a loss of detail. So fair's fair, but this one is smaller than the other one and it actually looks quite a bit better, doesn't it? So you can easily see on these models here that a 0.2 model is, a 0.2 nozzle, sorry, is giving much better results on this kind of object. Now, I say on this kind of object because we're going somewhere here, because when I started printing um, some mini figures, as in, um, well, they're, they're, they're goblins. They're not. They're not people. But I started to run into some significant problems, and so unfortunately, the process started getting a bit time-consuming because I had to invoke actual science and start doing iterations of the same print. It's actually also worth mentioning at this point that every single print you see um, from here on took about maybe four to five hours to print out. So this was a quite long-winded process. I want to first show you a model that I had. I think I showed you this in the last video, but just as a catch-up. This was printed out on the Mini Delta at 0.4. It did have a sword in its hand, but it fell off. That doesn't matter. I want you to get an idea of the overall quality. As I switch to Abrace Yourselves, this is, this is like something out of a horror movie. Now there's absolutely nothing redeeming about that something is going horribly wrong here 
and it didn't take me long to realise that it was something to do with the interface between the support material and the model, and I guess the 0.2mm nozzle being a lot smaller means that you don't have the kind of forgiveness between the layers that you, you're getting on the 0.4. I mean, that was my best guess, so that's where I started experimenting. And I printed out models across different kind of support structure, and well, let's have a look. Well, the first thing I tried was actually to go into Mesh Mixer itself, and I thought that you know having that control over adding the supports myself might mean that I know what's going on. So I tried that a bit, and also I just I'd never done this before, so I thought I'd I'd give it a go. And the results weren't that bad, to be honest. I printed out maybe I think three models using Mesh Mixer with different parameters, and yeah, I mean, they weren't they weren't great, but they weren't that bad. But the main reason I didn't like that as an option was because the supports from Mesh Mixer just weren't coming off by hand. You had to you had to clip them off. So I was back into Cura, um, just trying to improve the interface and the distance between the support material and the model. But before we go into that, I just want to show you the the, the supports in Mesh Mixer, just to show you how they work and what they're like. Now, obviously, I'm not intending this to be a mesh mixer tutorial, so I'm just going to tell you what you have to do. You go into analysis once you've got the model loaded in and in there you've got to generate support button and you can, you know, you can mess with the options a bit. But it almost, I mean, I think it pretty much only generates these kinds of supports because that's all I could get out of it. Just you can change the thickness and the, the, the tip diameter and but it always comes out with this. Now, there's a lot of times when that would be really good support structure, um, even though they look like um, supports that you would use for a um, resin printer, they actually work really well on FDM in the right situation. But I didn't quite feel that this model or this specific model, because a lot of the uh, support needed was actually in awkward places. and you just end up spending a lot of time clipping the support off and trying to file down the uh, where you'd removed it. So a mixed bag, I'd say. Now, before I went back into Cura, I had a really good look at the models to try and figure out if there was anything else going on. And I spotted a weird phenomenon. In this photo, look closely at the arm on this model. You can see there's kind of like a texture to that arm, which is it's not desirable. I couldn't see how this was happening because there wasn't supposed to be any support here. And so the logical thing to do was to look into the preview tab of Cura and check layer by layer to see how the model was being built up. To get a closer look at this, I had to turn off support. Now, first I noticed there were loads of gaps in the model, as you can see in the picture. It took me a while to track down why this was happening as there weren't any hints. But eventually I found an experimental setting called coasting which was turned on. I don't know why. Um, this uses the extra filament in theory when there's a move. There's a little bit of ooze out of the um, end of the nozzle and instead of retracting it tries to use this so it leaves a gap if you get what I mean. Um, so I turned this off, re-sliced, as if by magic the gaps disappeared. <laughs> This only partly improved the quality though, and the problem was still happening, so I looked into how each slice was being generated, which is a really cool feature of Cura, and I think Prusa Slicer does it too. Most slicers probably do. You could wind back like this. Um, notice how each slice was being generated. Uh, they, It's creating the walls, the lines around the outside in the same place. Um, it's no coincidence this is exactly where the marks are on the model. And it turns out this is a problem when we're printing things like our miniature, but it can be solved by changing the Z-seam parameters, which are oddly only able to be found without putting the minus sign in. I guess that changes the search parameter, because um, it being a minus sign. Uh, you can change the seam, seam location to either user specified and then turn it to the back of the model so it's not so visible or you can put it to random which I thought was quite interesting because it seems to work well uh, it changes where it jumps each time and I quite like the random option because I found it it did give a much smoother result without having to specify exactly where you want the seam to be because you might want it to be in different places in different parts of the model so once I solved this 
I found the prints came out a lot more consistent, but I had to go back to dealing with the support problem. Now I tried line support next, just choosing standard support and choosing lines as the um, infill. I think I had one wall um, around that support to try and, and, and it was quite, you know, quite um, low density. The sort of distance between each line was really quite high relative to the size of the model. And it did work, but similar to the mesh mixer supports, it still just wasn't coming off well. Uh, I actually broke one of the models trying to get the support off. I took a leg off while I was doing it. I couldn't get a balance between the quality of the underside of the model and being able to cleanly break off the support. And almost out of desperation, I went back to my favorite type of support, which was what wasn't working before, and that's tree supports. And if you haven't used tree supports in Cura, you absolutely must try them. Um, it's called tree support essentially because it branches out as it builds up and that means you can support things that aren't directly over that, that are directly over the build plate but you don't have to build up on the build plate because it sort of you can, you can essentially support round corners effectively um, so I basically fiddled about with the tree support parameters until they were sparse enough to allow me to remove them so you weren't completely encapsulating the uh, part but also I um, one of the main things I did that made the results a lot better was to reduce the gap between the bottom of the supports and the start of the, the object. It's called the Z top gap, I think. I'll put a, I'll write it at the top. And that parameter is something that you have to have quite high on a 0.4 nozzle in order to be able to remove the supports. But you'd think that you'd halve it for a 0.2, but actually, no, it doesn't work like that. You need it to be a lot smaller. You need it to be pretty much just one layer. Whereas you tend to set it to about two layers on a 0.4 nozzle. So combination of those elements, did, did changing those elements did actually get me... It got me to a point where I thought, this is okay. And I think that for a model like this, I would... Now, I, I don't know if everyone else prints their models upright, but as someone who doesn't normally print miniatures, or at least it's something I'm fairly new to doing, I would instinctively print it so that the detail I want is not supported, and also choose the angle so that you get the best horizontal resolution, which would be a bit more of a leaned back pose like this. And by the way, if you go to preferences and turn off drop models to build plate, you can also raise the model up off the floor a bit, which gives you, it doesn't kind of mess up the bit that's touching the base, if you get what I mean. And to put my money where my mouth is or time where my mouth is I suppose I I did actually print this one out so we'll we'll go and have a look at it well you can't really tell much while it's in the um, in the shell but this is um, this is a demonstration of why I like tree supports this this piece here will just come off so easily um i think unfortunately i did most of it slightly off camera but it really didn't take much effort to get that off and then there was just minimal cleanup to do so this is what we ended up with and i guess it's the curse of the 3d print it's something it's like an observed phenomenon whenever you try and take a picture of a naked 3d print it always looks absolutely rubbish so i i gave it a bit of gray paint to bring up the i think it's kind of the, the matte finish kind of just shows up on the camera better and while i think we could all agree that there's an actually an awful lot of room still for improvement there are a couple of factors here that i want to point out the first one being that this is a professional dslr macro lens um the scale at which you're seeing it with the camera is way higher than you will see it with the naked eye um, and with the naked eye it doesn't show nearly so many of these flaws in fact to the naked eye it actually looks pretty fine this is more 
what it looks like to the naked eye um, at this kind of distance. And that does make you realise with the models like the train um, just exactly how high high uh, high resolution and exactly how detailed they actually are again to the naked eye because they look immensely detailed even in the macro lens so we're kind of reaching a conclusion at this point we we need to figure out how to pick the bones out of this one and i think that the following points need to be really mentioned first of all you can get finer prints on a 0.2 millimeter nozzle is it worth putting a 0.2 millimeter nozzle on your printer well the fundamental question is it your only printer if you have a second printer then yes yes absolutely it makes sense to have one of them with a finer nozzle but if it's your only printer and this gets to point number two the print time is actually massively longer with a 0.2 nozzle it's not just double i think is it speculating that it's eight times because it's a cube rule kind of thing but the print time has increased so so extraordinarily that you know a model that would have taken say 40 minutes before is is in a it's it's four plus hours now straight-sided models that don't require support seem to benefit a lot more um some models seem to create more trouble. Um, again, this comes down to having two printers because the first thing you do when you're having trouble with a model, you, you just print it out on your 0.4 nozzle. The issue a lot of people speak about with blockages. Now, I printed out, it must have been in the order of about 20 models during the process of making this video. I had one blockage halfway through a print. I don't consider that statistically significant enough to make a comment, other than obviously I nearly had no blockages so I don't think blockages with a 0.2 nozzle is a big deal so I would say don't worry too much about that it may depend on your filament and finally yes cameras make prints look worse this is a known issue this is a known issue at any scale you've probably noticed whenever you take a picture of a 3d print it looks worse so to a certain extent you have to take my word for it that when I say a print is acceptable it it is acceptable I think that probably wraps up everything I feel like I want to say about this process. I am glad I did it and I will be keeping that nozzle on that printer but I do have another Monoprice Mini Delta with a 0.4 nozzle and I do have an Ender 3 with a 0.4 nozzle so it's it's all about options. Let's talk about settings because I said I would talk about settings at the end of the video. I do not want to trudge through all the settings that are required in Cura. I want to highlight the ones that I found made a big difference to the quality of the printout. Um, I've already mentioned one, which is the coasting, and I've mentioned Z seam location. So those are two things already. If you want a baseline of the settings for a 0.2 millimeter nozzle, I recommend the channel on YouTube called The Hall of 3D Printed Horrors. There is a video which I will link which goes through I think pretty much all the settings. Um, so I'd, I'd say go you know go do that but then it's really important to understand what these settings do so pay attention in that video and the more you understand the settings the, the more you can recognize what's going wrong when you get something out that just looks like you know looks horrible you've got somewhere to start rather than just having no idea what to do i hope that helped if there's any questions or comments please leave them i will read and respond to any comments and any questions so please do i am committing to the next video being an Arduino based video and it is going to be a very good one trust me and now I've said it in a video I'm going to have to do it. The hint is it's going to be music related and it's going to be really good so um, stick around for that but thank you for watching.